My name is Sergio Corrigan. I'm residing in Oregon, <clears throat> present time. I was a member of 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, uh, Scout Sniper Platoon. Um, I'm going to cover rules of engagement because we were uh, rules of engagement and also um, an incident that can kind of relate to what kind of rules of engagement we were given by the people they're supposed to take care of us and supposed to guide us the right way in this war. Uh, upon arrival to our AO, I was in al Qaeda Region 2, also as uh, Vince Emanuele, but I was in the town of Saber, right on the Syrian border. Uh, it was a little base. Uh, town was not secure at that time when we went there. And the initial rules of engagement when we actually got there was if a person has a weapon or there's suspicious activity going on, we had to call the commanding post, request the permission, and uh, assess the situation and see what... what we were going to do. Um, on the third day when we arrived to our uh, city, uh, our company commander, our first lieutenant, and one of our NCOs that I went to SOI school with, they got killed by an IED that was placed in the Hasco barriers, which are barriers to isolate bases, and it was actually a light placed there, and they pulled with the sand. The rules were, as the time went on, and as the casualties grew, grew higher and grew higher, rules start getting a little bit lenient and from things going on and seeing your friends get getting blown up and killing every day we didn't really question them because we just wanted we were angry we just wanted to do we just wanted to do our job and come back then you uh, as the rules went on start lenient it went down from person having a weapon to not calling the commanding post and if they have a weapon or if they're doing some sort of um, um, illegal activity, I should say, suspicious activity, they would, uh, we, would be able, we were allowed to take them out. We would call it in, tell them we have a suspicious activity, and we would take the person out. The more it went on and the more casualties we got, at one point it changed to Iraqis had to have a heavy bag and a shower, which is about 75% of Iraqi people right now trying to rebuild their country, and most of them have showers, and they carry heavy bags, and they dig. And if they were digging, especially close to the road, we had to take them out. Later on, about a month later, we, rules went to, we were told that it was up to us to make a decision. Looking back from a clear mind right now as not being angry and mad, it's the rules of engagement were absolutely inappropriate, by, especially by the higher chain of command that giving it to us. I would also, also like to uh, mention this incident that happened, and it kind of will let you a little bit view on what, how our chain of command and people in the higher, what they what they're really doing. I lived with a roommate. He was on the suicide watch for three months before we deployed to Iraq. Three weeks before we deployed, we had a family day. They took him off the suicide watch. So when his parents come there, he wouldn't tell them anything. About three, four days later, when we came to Iraq, he, he shot himself in the shower. And I just think it shows that our people in the command towards rules of engagement and towards our troops and towards people of Iraq are not doing their job and I don't know what's going on there but I want to apologize to all the people and in Iraq and I'm sorry and I, I hope this is going to be over as soon as possible. Thank you.